morning everyone, look who's hanging out with us today. James and I are going to the Met, Metropolitan Museum of Art. That's right my friends, we're gonna go to the Museum of Art, but what we're gonna check out today is a very limited time exhibit, something very, 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 very important in American rock and roll history. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. What is going on here? All right, we have arrived. What a beautiful museum. They have some really amazing stuff to check out in this museum, but what I really want to see today is they have a guitar exhibit, and one of the guitars they have in there is Jimmy Page's Telecaster that he used on Stairway to Heaven. It's gonna be a great exhibit. I can't wait to check it out. Play it loud. Get to see some great art along the way too to get to it. This is the Chuck Berry style guitar. Whoa, check that out. They're showing various instruments of various bands and like what made them famous. So you can see some of the Beatles style instruments here. Probably see that it's donated courtesy of Jim Irsay, the owner of the Colts. So that is John Lennon's actual Rickenbacker. Wow, that's crazy. Now that Rickenbacker we just saw was John Lennon's and it's here courtesy of Yoko. It says he built this customly after the Ed Sullivan appearance and used it for the 65 tour and A Hard Day's Night. Now this is Mr. Great Balls of Fire himself, Jerry Lee Lewis Piano, on loan from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Gold piano. And if you haven't seen the Mike Judge series, you gotta check it out. He tells the story of Jerry Lee Lewis getting away with murder. And it says here that this was his home piano from 1957 to 2017. Wow, can you imagine how many songs were played on this? How many times he kicked back that seat and was hopping around and pounding on those keys? Legendary. Now that's Lewis Jordan's saxophone on loan from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Wow, check this out. This was Muddy Waters Telecaster, and this is the one that he used throughout his whole career from 1958 till he died in 1983. This would have been one of the original fenders made at the Fullerton plant, too. Wow. Now, this is, of course, the Bo Diddley model. He made his own rectangular shape, box shape guitar with his name on it and this was one of the models that Gretsch ended up putting out. One of his signature models. That's really cool to see. Now this is great. This is one of the Everly Brothers guitars. This is Don Everly's guitar. Wake Up Little Susie. Bye Bye Love. Some great songs would have been played on that. And they're who told Buddy Holly to wear the horn rim glasses when they were out on tour with him. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they have this. I had no idea. This is the Buddy Holly guitar. This is the one that Gary Busey bought at the auction when Buddy Holly's family finally decided to sell some of his stuff when the movie came out. And um, Gary Busey was a friend of the family and loved Buddy Holly from playing him and everything was always inspired by him. So he ended up buying this. That's so cool to see this. He actually played it on Arsenio a long time ago. There's like footage of him taking this on the Arsenio Hall show and showing it off. I've always wanted to see that guitar. That's so cool. Buddy made that leather case that's around that himself because he liked Elvis's. The one that Elvis was using on Ed Sullivan. So he made one for himself. Wow, that is so rad. Actually, it's not saying it's on loan from Gary Busey, so this may have been another one that Buddy made. I know he made a couple of them. Oh yeah, now I'm noticing this definitely is not Gary Busey's because, well for one thing, I don't think Gary Busey let an investment like that start falling apart on top like that. But I can also tell, because right over here, by the pick guard right there, the one that Buddy Holly made that Gary Busey has has more leather around it, so this would have been a second one. And this guitar belonged to Wanda Jackson. She was credited as being the queen of rockabilly. That's so cool to see. Look at her guitar strap and everything. You can see her name on there. And then also, like the star and everything. And her name down here. I love that. 
says that she used to use this regularly on Tex Ritter's ranch party program. So this was George Harrison's very first electric guitar. When the Beatles were start, starting to form and they had been using acoustic guitars, this is the first thing that he got that moved away from it. That is so crazy to see. And there's actually some signatures you can see on there, but they said it's not from the Beatles, it's actually from the, the manager. Or um, it was like the, um, the Beatles road manager, Neil Aspinall. You can kind of faintly, I'm trying to get in there, you can kind of faintly see the signature still there. Now this is Elvis's guitar. Elvis's acoustic guitar and it says that this is one that he would have used while he was playing with Scotty Moore while they were playing together. And he said you can see how much he would have beaten up on it. All the uh, fingernail scratches and everything there, the pick scratches. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was one of his main guitars in the early days of performing out. Probably Hayride days even. This is a 1942. Who knows? And then you can probably see right there where that used to say Elvis, but the S is missing off those little stick-on things right there. This is really cool. This is one of Jimmy Page's custom Les Pauls. And they said that it has a crazy story because he used to use it when he was a session guitar player and he was um, flying into Minneapolis and it got stolen at the airport. He used it from 62 to 67 and it was stolen at the airport in 1970 when he took it out on the road and got it back in 2015. It's crazy. Wow, look at all the, the battle scars and everything on it. That is really cool. Sorry, we can't look at that one because it's on tour with the Rolling Stones. We'll see that in a couple of days. Wink, wink. Here we kind of have some modern artists. This is Jack White's guitar right here from the White Stripes. That's kind of a cool one. Used it for all of his um, live performances during the White Stripes era. It says, used it um, in the Seven Nation Army video and Hardest Button to Button. Wow. That's cool. It's an airline. And then that's Ann Clark's guitar from St. Vincent. Also a pretty cool looking guitar. Not, I don't know much about her, uh, her music though, honestly. So this guitar has a really, really great history. This is a Hoffner. And this is, they say, the guitar that Prince bought at a gas station for $30 when he was, well, in the 1970s. And um, this is on loan from Paisley Park. It says he performed his masterful rendition of the Beatles' While My Guitar Gently Weeps on, I guess, this guitar. is a tribute to George Harrison. There's Prince playing that guitar. This is incredibly iconic. If you're an Eric Clapton fan, you know what Blackie means. Blackie was his number one guitar forever. That's so cool to have it here. I guess Guitar Center owns it now. I didn't know that, but look how much play is on those frets. You can't fake that, man. Look at that. Think of Layla and Cocaine, Bell Bottom Blues. Man, Eddie, Eddie Van Halen's favorite guitar player. And that is the back of Blackie. Look at all the belt buckle rubbing that would have went on to that. Wow, that is insane. And there he is playing Blackie with Pete Townsend. This isn't owned by anybody famous or anything. It's just one of the most rare Gibson Explorers there is. Now this guitar is pretty cool. This has a, uh, a story of being owned by Paul Kossoff of Free. He got it from Eric Clapton when Blind Faith toured with Free. So this was actually Clapton's guitar at one point too. And this one is the very first Fender prototype. Look how different it is. The uh, the pickguard and everything is just all completely different. The headstock isn't the signature Fender headstock. It's really cool. And here, of course, we have the Frankenstrat, Frankenstein, Frankenstrat, whatever he wants to call it. He made a ton of these trying to get it right. They all look the same, but Eddie did, I think, like 13 different tries at this. You can see where he put that quarter up there. That's always one of my favorite signature marks of the this guitar. He put like three drill holes into that quarter and put that on there. Yeah, Eddie used to make these in his house, just trying to get like a sound that nobody else could copy or recreate. 
You've been making a white one, a yellow one. And then here's the back of it. He used to put those reflectors on there so that when he was on stage he could flip the guitar upside down and all the lights would hit that. Kind of a cool idea. This is Neil Young's Flying V. Used this on tour with the Stray Gators in 72 and 73 to support the Harvest album. This was Joni Mitchell's guitar. That's really cool to see. She was definitely a pioneer. Says that she used it for her Refuge World Tour, as well as her Shadow and Light album. It's a George Benson model Ibanez archtop. You see the GB up there on the headstock. Now this soul power guitar is Tom Morello's. Tom Morello was in Rage Against the Machine and Audio Slave, and this was his Audio Slave guitar from 2002 to 2007 for songs like Cochise and Like a Stone, Be Yourself were recorded on this. You can still see the ends of the strings up there. And this is kind of an interesting guitar that Joe Perry now uses, and this was the very first production run. They said they were really rare, they only have like a hundred of them. But this was one that he used when he first introduced playing it. So this Stratocaster was owned by The Edge, and this was what he acquired and was recording the Joshua Tree album with, and then took it out on tour for the Joshua Tree tours. That's kind of cool. You can see his guitar picks are still stuck on there. Now this was actually Jimi Hendrix Flying V, and they said that he had originally painted it this way. Um, he called it his Love Drops guitar, and then um, he gave it to a friend, and then that friend was a musician and ended up stripping it and making it just black again, and when another uh, musician acquired it, he went and repainted it the way that Jimi had it originally. Kind of cool story. Here's Jimi. This is Jimmy Page's number one. This is his main Les Paul that he used throughout his career. They said that he got it from Joe Walsh and um, when Joe Walsh was in the James Gang and he had already like shaved down the neck a little bit and Jimmy Page loved it and literally used it for his entire touring career. Wow. Jimmy Page, Led Zeppelin, dude, wow. The number one. Take a look at the back of the Jimmy Page guitar. That wear from up there. And there Jimmy is with the guitar. Wow, that is Jerry Garcia's Tiger. Wow, the Doug Irwin Tiger. He was playing the Wolf forever, but he just he never really got the guitar he wanted, and so Doug Irwin made this for Jerry and gave it to him as a gift. Wow, that is a rarity. Wow, wow, that is so cool to see. Look at the neck, you can see his name in there. Jay Garcia. Look at that headstock. Wow, man, what an honor to see this guitar. Oh, what a highlight, what a highlight. And this is Angus Young of ACDC's. SG Standard says he used it for the 1980s concerts live at Donington and live at the River Plate and as well as on the Grammys and here we've got Stevie Ray Vaughan's number one he actually put this together himself trying to get his own sound and you can see he customized and everything he used to use this for everything including David Bowie's Let's Dance you can see it says custom on there and everything I thought Kenny Wayne Shepherd had bought this, but it says it's um, loaned by the estate of Stevie Ray Vaughan, so, wow. I wish they would have shown the back. It's pretty beat up, too. And you can see up here where he's got his, he used to rest his cigarettes up there, so you got that cigarette burn right at the very top. Now this number six was Pete Townsend's, and they said that in the 1975 tour he had nine guitars, and they were all numbered, so this was number six, his gold top Les Paul. And this Rickenbacker was owned by George Harrison. They said that he purchased this in Illinois in 1963 when he was visiting his sister. Huh. 
this Telecaster here was used by Jeff Beck when he was in the Yardbirds, and what a historical band that was. A lot of famous people came out of that. Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck. That was legendary. Look how much he used it though. It's called an Esquire. I've never actually seen one. It's kind of like a Telecaster, but not quite. Look at the, the wear on the neck here. And it says that he also used to use this with a fuzz pedal so that he could get an effect that sounded like um, a buzzing harmonics of a sitar. Now this guitar right here is James Hetfield of Metallica's guitar. And this, of course, was Lars Ulrich's drum set, who's also in Metallica. They said that he used this on the uh, Death Magnetic Tour. And then this was Robert Trujillo from Metallica's bass. Kind of a cool bass, too. Check out all the art on there. It's like Aztec. And then this was longtime guitar of Kirk Hammett. A famous uh, punk hard rock skater designer guy made this for him, and he used it since 1992. And then here we have some of Steve Miller's Echoplex and some of his um, analog synthesizers. And this entire case all belong to The Roots, the group The Roots. That is Ray Manzarek from The Doors on loan from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That is so cool. Oh man, how cool. And it says this is a gift from the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger's collection, and it's one of the Mellotrons that they used. They said that they only owned two, and they recorded um, 2,000 Light Years from Home, and She's a Rainbow from their Satanic Majesty's Request. Wow, that's cool. She comes in colors everywhere. She's like a rainbow. So B-52 fans, this is Kate Pearson's combo deluxe that she used on Rock Lobster. Now this is Ian McLoggin's um, Wurlitzer. He was in the Faces, but he also played on Miss You by the Rolling Stones, and he played Miss You on this electric Wurlitzer. How cool. And that is not Paul McCartney's bass, but that is an identical bass to the one that he played on the Ed Sullivan show. That violin style Hoffner. However, this one was Paul McCartney's and he did use it on the Queen's Diamond Jubilee in 2002. So this was actually loaned by him personally. This is Cheryl Crow's acoustic guitar from 1959. That's John Entwistle from The Who's bass. As well as this one, that was also John Entwistle's bass. He liked it because it had a very bright tone, which is kind of odd for a bass player. That's really cool. That's Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth Space. I don't like all of Sonic Youth's music, but I do like a handful of their records. I have some good stuff. Teenage Riot's a great song. And then this modulus here was Fleas from Red Hot Chili Peppers. And that is Steve Miller's bass. Look at that, isn't that crazy? You can actually see through the neck. Then this belonged to Depeche Mode. Songs of Faith and Devotion and Ultra, they used this on. It's a synthesizer. This is Keith Emerson's stunt piano. Look at the knives up there. It's hilarious. Missing keys and everything. Look at this monster setup. Holy cow. This is also Jimmy Page's guitar. It's a guitar that he helped invent, or a style that he helped invent, and he's used it on the Page and Plant tours and the reunion tour. And that, of course, is Prince's guitar. Wow, on loan from Paisley Park. That is the headstock from Eric Clapton's famous The Fool guitar. Check this out. They have Jimmy Page's costume and the guitar and a mannequin wearing it all. That's awesome. Wow. So this smash guitar was Kurt Cobain's and he actually smashed it in Inglewood at the Forum in LA during the In Utero tour and they said that the reason that he did it was to impress Eddie Van Halen because Eddie Van Halen was in the crowd. Weird. 
Got his Nancy Wilson of Hearts guitar. Right next to a Paul Stanley. Iceman from KISS. And then this guitar was made for Ron Wood of the Rolling Stones. And that's Lady Gaga's piano. It's pretty interesting. They call it the art pop piano, but it kind of looks like a big slab of ice, doesn't it? Here's Eddie Van Halen's guitar rig and his wall set up. That's awesome. And that's all Tom Morello's stuff. This is Jimmy Page's rig, and that acoustic guitar is what he played the acoustic parts on Stairway to Heaven with. The Sovereign Harmony. Very cool guitar. And he also has Dan Electra right there and his theremin right over here and his pedals and amps that's really cool so on the dan electro he put his celtic tuning and this is what he recorded um when the levee breaks in my time of dying cashmere and black mountain side and then this is keith richards rig oh, really? and his guitar baby. how cool is that on um, my stones very first tour. First and that last ball is the one that Keith Richards used when the Stones played Ed Sullivan. He said in the day, as, uh, everybody that was playing electric was using Fenders or something else, and he and Clapton were the first to use Les Pauls on TV. So this Les Paul is Keith Richards, and this is really cool because this was something that he hand painted when the Stones were taking time off after the drug arrest in France. Look at that. It says it appears in Sympathy for the Devil and um, during the recording process of Beggar's Banquet. Here we have Jimmy Page's Dragon. Fender just borrowed this from him so that they could take it apart and learn how to recreate it to sell them. They just made them available for sale. And there's a video online of Jimmy checking it out when they reproduced it and he's just blown away. He's going like, you guys got every little thing perfect. Look at that. His amplifier. He used that on uh, Stairway to Heaven. There's his jacket. And of course his violin bow. See, he wore the jacket during the Yardbirds. I've actually seen him wear that in photos. That's Bruce Springsteen's Telecaster. It says it's on the cover of Live 75 to 85 Human Touch and Wrecking Ball. For you Boss fans. That's Steve Miller's custom guitar that he created for a TV appearance. I didn't even have to look to see what these were. I've seen these in guitar magazines forever. These were the instruments from Cream. Clapton and Jack Bruce's instruments. Hand painted. Jimmy Page's dragon suit with his double neck guitar. Epic. Look at that suit. You can see the Zoso and everything down the legs. That's George Harrison's acoustic guitar. And then this Explorer bass was designed by John Entwistle of The Who. Look at all the weird stuff along the neck and everything. That's one of Steve Vai's Bones guitars. That of course is Rick Nielsen from Cheap Tricks. And this belonged to Don Felder of The Eagles. Whoa, I went to Seattle to see this and I couldn't see it because they said, oh, you know, sometimes we rotate displays, maybe it's out somewhere else. Yeah, it's here. Wow, that is part of Jimi Hendrix hand-painted Monterey Pop Strat that he destroyed. He painted it the night before and then destroyed it at the concert. That's the one that he lit on fire and everything and busted up. Oh, Jerry Garcia's Wolf. This is the one that they just loaned to John Mayer when they played New York City and let him play it for the night. Wow, that is amazing. This was his main guitar throughout the 70s. I'm actually, actually, I'm getting one of those. The company that hooked me up with the the other Wolf guitar is uh, is making me one of those. So cool. With his strap. This was Keith Moon's drum set that he received at the beginning of the uh, 1967 tour. One of the most explosive drummers in history. Literally, the guy blew up his drum sets. <laughs> wow. And it says this drum set was on the Pictures of Lily single, and then it says right there, Keith Moon patent, British exploding drummer. And these are both guitars of the Who. The one on the 
left, the white one was Roger Daltrey's, and the one on the right was Pete Townsend's main guitar from 72 to 79 on tour. And then in that SG was Pete Townsend's exclusive guitar from 67 to 71, until he switched over to the Les Pauls. Now that was Joan Jett's guitar. The girl's kick and everything. Black hearts, you can see on there. And this was Joe Strummer's guitar while he was with The Clash. And those two guitars belong to the Everly Brothers. Beautiful guitars. Now let's check these out. Wow, you know what this is? This was the electric guitar that Bob Dylan played when he debuted playing electric at the Newport Folk Festival, where he got booed relentlessly. Wow. Hey, it had to be done. He changed music that day. He made folk music something other than acoustic guitars and dulcimers and banjos and stuff. He, he brought it into the new era. That is so cool to see. Now, this is interesting, you know what this is? This is Eric Clapton's acoustic guitar from the MTV Unplugged concert when he reworked all of his old songs and came up with that new version of Layla and Tears in Heaven, all that stuff. Yeah, this is what he played at that show. Wow, that is really cool. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ooh. Look at this. And then the Who. And then they have an original Crickets Buddy Holly Winter Dance Party poster. And here's we enter the gift shop. You can see they're selling that guitar. It's a very limited edition, so get one now. I think they're like eleven hundred dollars. Wow, what an exhibit that was. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Have a great night, everyone. We will come back to the Met a future time in New York City. We'll vlog this, but today it was just the Play It Loud exhibit. See you all tomorrow. Goodbye.